So in this video, we're going to be um, adding some rhinestones to our letter X specifically. And the reason I chose this is because there's a couple of techniques that I think are important to know. Use them all the time here in CorelDRAW. And also what I think is interesting is once you see the process here in CorelDRAW, how you might take that same process into your own rhinestone software if you're not using CorelDRAW, and how you might apply a similar technique. Um, and pretty much all I know is CorelDRAW, so it'd be interesting to see if other people that have other rhinestone software could lend an ear and uh, teach us all how some of these other programs work. So first things first, I'm going to pull down a guideline, and I'm going to place this guideline right at the tip of our letter X. Click on the guideline, and by default you will get somewhere along the line, you will get this little circle, and that is the where the, the, the guideline rotates from. And then I can grab these control handles and just rotate that guideline into the rotation of our letter X. Now here's something that I think um, what is what makes CorelDRAW special. And that is how easy it is. I can just take this line, click and drag with my left mouse, right click, make a duplicate, and drag it right to the bottom of our letter X. And this is something I do all the time, copy existing guidelines, same angle and so forth. In CorelDRAW, it doesn't get much simpler. Some of these other programs, I don't know. Maybe the feature exists, maybe it doesn't. Um, but that's something that is important to know for us as we do our design work. Now, the next thing we want to make sure under the View menu that our Snap to Guidelines is turned on, and mine is because it's checked. Perfect. So, next thing we need to do is define what the color of our control path is going to be just for our own amusement. So we're going to right click and choose yellow. Grab our pen tool and draw the control path. So because we have snapped guidelines turned on, we can just click and click right at that line. Hit the space bar to get rid of that. But right at that line. Okay. And then the next thing we need to do is go with we need one control line this way, one control line the other way. So then the next thing I'm going to do is not have anything selected and right click a different color. So that my next control line that I draw, click and click, it's a little bit different color. A little hard to see in the video, but um, on screen here I can actually tell that it, they are, two, uh, are in fact two different colors. Now the next thing to do here is we need, um, just like earlier when we did our letter uh, O, I made the executive decision that I'm going to do three rows of light cyan and two rows of dark. And that is what is going to represent my letter X. So what I'm going to do is select that control path. Now I actually have a little nifty little feature uh, here that will help us with this and what it's called under the stone fill tab it's called island fill and we're going to island fill to the outside because that's all you can do with a non-closed path you can only go to the outside but the, my stone size is already preset 3.1 is what I use for my hole size for cutting my templates and 0.4 for the spacing so those two values are automatically calculated together to give us our island fill offset value and we can change that or we can leave it set the, to the defaults, which we'll leave set to the defaults. And then this box here, we can tell it how many. So I'm going to do two offsets and choose island fill. And it doesn't really actually give us an island fill at all. It just gives us an offset. Um, but now we have these paths, right? Now you can see that these have kind of like a closing on either side. So we need to get rid of that, which we will here in a moment. But let's do the same thing in the opposite direction. Okay, so just hit Island Fill, go to, go to the outside again, and hit Island Fill again. And we'll right click on that color we use. And that gives those lines a slightly different color. Now, what I need to do is get rid of all these end caps. Now, let me show you something here. Right now, these are all rectangles. See, they're all interconnected, right? But because of that, I just created a function that took care of that for us. So we just select all those objects, come over here to our Edit tab, and choose Break at Nodes. But we need to give it an angle. To say anything over 20 degrees, bust it up into pieces for us. So we hit Break at Nodes, done. 
So now all those are broken apart. So we just delete those end caps because we no longer need the end caps. Now we need to edit these lines a little bit because they really extended beyond uh, where we really wanted them to extend beyond to. So I'm going to grab my pen tool and just click and click, right? And then come down here and we're going to, anywhere along here, we can just click, click, and back to the beginning. So we just kind of created this rectangle, right? And so what I did was, is a, because I'm just lazy, um, I always look for ways to, to figure out how to, you know, create something simply. So we're going to mark that new object that I just created. We're going to mark that. And then we're going to take all of those lines and we're going to trim those objects uh, back to back to the line. And basically anything that's sticking over they uh, we just trim away and that's how that works so anything that extended beyond they that gets rid of now we do have one other thing to fix and that is these lines a couple of these lines here don't actually extend far enough to what we need them to so what we do is we can just select the line right click and drag and put it back select the line right click and drag and put it back and then what I do is I give that a different color on both of them so and then I just hit control page down till I see my yellow line appear do the same thing on the other object here control page down yellow line appears now you say well what did you do that for well because then I can grab this node and I've got something to snap to I got two objects so I can snap to the intersection and I can snap to my intersection and then of course I can get rid of my blue objects because I no longer need those now over here I don't have that problem because everything's trimmed right at the edge where it's supposed to up here I do have the problem so just right click and drag pick, pick it back up and move it back into place right click control paste down right same thing here we'll pick it up down here right click and drag Boom, give it a, a color and control page down. A couple of times, there it is. So we can extend this line now. So we double click on the line, grab our node edit tool here, and there's our node. We'll pull it down to it says intersection. Pull it down to it says intersection. Alright. So we got rid of that. Now we have all these crisscrossing lines. What I'd like to do, for simplicity's sake, let's take a duplicate of all those lines, right click and drag, and make a duplicate, and show you why, first of all, why that in and of itself isn't going to cut the mustard. If we were to stone these lines just as they are, let's see what kind of menagerie we get here. So we'll go back to our stone tab and click add stones. And what a cluster gaggle we have right here in the middle, right? And that's because we have lines going in this direction, lines going in this direction, and we have no way to tell CorelDRAW where, how to handle these intersecting stones. And that is really what most programs I've seen doesn't do well. We don't have a clear way it oftentimes when you especially when you have this crisscrossing of stones it's very difficult in most programs for the auto intelligence to automatically put that in the right uh, sequence like we have in our mind so what I did was I just created a function to do that for us um, and basically that function is if we select those lines that function is found under our edit tab and it's just called split selection and rather than try to really explain what happens it's just it's it's smart it knows what to do after hours and hours of thinking it knows what to do now <laughs> so I don't have to think anymore um, anytime you have overlapping lines you just choose that function and that makes the process of adding stones a, a lot more intelligent so let's go back over to our stone tab and select those and now when we add stones you're gonna see 
it's much much better in fact it's perfect so let's bring over that stone and look at it and now you can see it does what we expect it to in both directions everything's lined up perfectly and that's exactly what we were looking for so now the next thing to do is simply apply um, the all of these stones right now are light cyan and so all we need to do is go in and specify what we want to be dark so let's switch our stones and right now all these stones are kind of interconnected and so we can just choose the rename stones and choose rename stones where we want them to be you can see those two we want to be dark and this row here rename stones and this row here rename stones and this row here we want and this row here we want right and this stone right here ideally we want to be uh, and this one too actually so we go ahead and rename both of those stones and then back over here we'll choose rename and here we'll choose rename okay so now all of our dark cyan is selected kind of like in the original uh, case was and then if we want we can leave that just the way it is or we can come in here and choose the break stone apart and now each one of these rather than being like a row of stones each one is now a separate stone okay so that is how we handle uh, the letter X here in Corel Draw. And then what will be interesting to see is how maybe some of the other rhinestone programs could handle or how they handle those intersecting paths like that um, in their software. Because um, I've found that most uh, stone programs don't do that very well. And if you look at the, the our stone our, of our letter X, you can see it is very similar to what we had originally as well. Thanks for watching.